In this video, I want to show how to do top-down modeling in SolidWorks. So top-down modeling is when you already have an assembly and you want to draw something inside it which fits exactly without having to measure a lot of stuff in your construction. So I've downloaded the flow meter from GrabCAD. So I can show it here. If you search for flow meter on GrabCAD, you can download the same model and I've deleted one tube that's inside there so I'm going to show you how you can easily draw a new tube inside this construction I'll do it without the connectors over here I'll just uh, start off uh, inserting a new component in here so I want to create a new component inside an assembly and that's what we call top-down modeling so uh, I'll choose assembly and then insert components new part I'm gonna draw a component within this assembly which will uh, cause some links between files so these files will become linked which means that if this assembly changes the part will also change so uh, you have to watch out with that so I'll first have to select a, a surface on which this new part should be started so I'll select this surface and then the whole assembly turns uh, transparent uh, this depends on your setting if it actually will do that so I want to easily draw a tube, so I don't want to use a, a 2D sketch because I want to draw in three dimensions. As you can see here, this tube over here runs in three dimensions as well. So I'll close my 2D sketch and start off a 3D sketch, which is a, a, a different way of sketching. So now if I choose a line, I can sketch in all three directions. You can see on the red, red uh, axis over here of the coordinate system in which direction I'm sketching right now. And with the tap button I can change this direction so now I, now I can draw in my desired direction so I'll start off over here draw a line it needs to go over here so first I'll run it up to this point then I want to draw on and then I want to go for example here and then it should go downwards which I can do it seems like I can but if you if you change direction you see this is not right I should use the tab button again to change the direction of these red arrows so tab now I can sketch downward uh -oh, that was not exactly correct but I'm gonna recover that later on and then with the tab button again I can draw my last line and this one I should correct because it has to run along the X coordinate that I see over here so I'll choose along X and then it's correct and for the rest let me see this should be possible then that I enter a, a relation between this surface with the control button I'll choose this line and I'll choose concentric so now this tube runs exactly up to this uh, part I'll draw it until here and what I can say is I can add some relation for example uh, this surface relations in a 3d sketch are a bit different than a 2d sketch this surface and this point should be on plane so then you see this point turning black because it's fully defined right now I can only uh, vary this distance over here because I haven't dimensioned that yet uh, the rest is all uh, defined by the assembly so now I can easily generate uh, fillets on this curve for example let me see a fillet of 30 millimeters and then I'll choose this point uh, I should clear selection this point this point this point and that's very easy to be done in a 3d sketch like that and now I can create my tube easily by starting a 2d sketch I want to have a surface that starts at this point so I'll create a, a new surface I have to exit the sketch first I'll create a new surface of playing on this point and then perpendicular to this line which is convenient then I can continue linking my part to the assembly by starting a new sketch in this case it just needs to be a circle to define the tube so I'll start a new sketch on this surface I'll uh, convert this line which also creates a link between the part and the assembly because if this part changes in diameter my tube will also change in diameter which is convenient in this assembly but if this tube would be used in another assembly it could be dangerous because the tube will change over there as well 
and you you might generate errors so you have to watch out when you're using these parts in multiple assemblies so let me see i should have this line i think it's uh, there it's not very clear yet but uh, it's oh yeah i see it over here so now i can uh, make a sweep so i'll finish the sketch this is my 2d sketch this is my 3d tube sketch and then i'll create a sweep of this sketch over the previously drawn part the line now i have to check whether or not the sweep is in the right direction because I want to have a, a hollow tube of course so I choose a thin feature and then I see it goes outside now outwards so I have to switch the direction the thickness is now one millimeter so I'll change it to about two millimeters as a thickness of the pipe all right and now I've already drawn with a lot of ease this part within this assembly I didn't have to measure anything of a real assembly so it's a, a convenient way of working but as mentioned previously you should pay attention when this tube is used in multiple assemblies because if this assembly changes this part will automatically change along with it so that's top-down modeling it can be very convenient uh, bottom-up modeling is the other one when you just have a lot of parts and you assemble them without any links with top-down modeling you create links between your part and your assembly which is easy because if the assembly changes the part changes along with it so the the part that you will use in reality uh, will fit exactly within the assembly 